like a lunatic coming in oh. like a psycho. Today, things get heated on a Kardashian girls trip. Kyle Christie explains what went wrong on the proving ground. I honestly wish I could get tears out, but I don't like most of you. So. <laughs> and Tommy Brocco is here to talk about life after Big Brother. I'm not playing both sides. You're, I'm you're picking not. a side right now. This is your reality check. I guess we're the bad guys this season again. I don't give a f Happy Monday! Today's show is sure to jumpstart your week. My name is Dave Quinn. I am your host for today, and this is Reality Check. Joining me is Staten Island Broadway dancer and Big Brother breakout, Tommy Brocco! Yay! Ball of energy. <laughs> so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for joining. We have Thank a lot you. to catch up on. Yes, we do. Especially your Big Brother whole run. I can't oh wait to talk gosh. to you about it. But before we do that, let's go to our top five. At number five, Kim Kardashian revealed the name that she and Kanye almost chose for their fourth child, Sam. Now on Sundays, Keeping Up With The Kardashian, the couple welcomed their new addition to their family and explained their decision for saying his moniker, saying his name was going to be Ye, but Kanye didn't like it because it doesn't mean anything. Now she went on to say that they looked through every name in the Bible that they had Ye in it, but they ultimately settled on Sam because according to Kanye, or sorry, Cardi Kyle, Sorry, according to Kylie, Sam and Saint sound good together. <laughs> Another Kardashian news today is actually Kim's birthday. Now, if you were friends with Kim, I want to know how you'd celebrate her birthday. Oh my God, I mean, it's Kim Kardashian. You have to really celebrate, go all out for her. Yeah. Either that or I would do something really, I would either go all out for it or I would just make it something really simple and just like have a picnic in the park. But I'd probably rent out the whole entire park yeah. so nobody could be so there. So nobody could be there So at all. it would just be the two of us <laughs> and we would go hike at a waterfall, something like really Ooh. like not something that she's used to, I think okay. I would do. Any dancing involved? I want to see a We dance. would obviously be doing a dance class, right. yes, <laughs> yes, obviously. Then I, I would have love... the instructor come to the park and hang out with us, right. yes. This is perfect. This is honestly, <laughs> if she doesn't want to do it for her birthday, my birthday's coming up, we'll do it together. Great, sounds good, can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> At number four, Sunday was a big night for uh, Jennifer Lopez and her clan. The singer spent her evening cuddling with her 11-year-old daughter, Emmy, for a cozy night in. Now, J-Lo shared the sweet snap of the pair, snuggling up in bed, captioning it Sunday night. Fiance A-Rod also crashed in on the bonding time by taking his two daughters, Natasha and Elle, out for dinner. The former Yankee superstar documented the outing on his Instagram story with the note, happiest daddy on earth. Are we excited to see these two tie the knot soon? I think so. Honestly, you know, my family, they're big into pop culture and mm -hmm. they love A-Rod and J-Lo together. Of course, yeah. So, you know, I've been locked in a house for four months, so I, I'm not really <laughs> caught up on what's going on with them, but... This is good news. I like this. This is what I like to hear. And True love New is Yorkers. blossoming. They're New Yorkers. You're a New Yorker. Yeah, I know. She's from Queens. I love or the Bronx, rather. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So they're so, perfect for it. I'm into it. I can't wait for it. And maybe we'll get an invite to the wedding if we keep pushing hard enough. I mean, they should. That you know, we deserve to be there. We 100. We're right up there with them, J Lo and A Rod. Absolutely. <laughs> At number three, Vanderpump Rules star Kristen Doty is writing a book. People can exclusively announce the Bravo star has teamed up with author Michelle Alexander to pen a book about her dating history and owning your crazy. The book, currently titled He's Making You Crazy, is expected to be published in hardcover and an ebook in summer 2020. In a statement to People, Kristen said, My goal is to create an army of boss bitches who own being crazy and fight for the respect we deserve. Wow. That's pretty awesome, right? I don't read books. I need to read this book. This sounds amazing. This is right up my alley. Really? Oh, yeah. Especially, you know, like, you deal with a lot of crazy in the Big Brother house. That's and, right. And I'm all for it. I Did love it. Did you ever it. write a book, do you think? I don't even know how to read a book, let alone <laughs> write a book. But I, I this is so impressive, and I think that this is actually something that the world needs to hear right now, because we're so peace, love, positivity. But that's not, I don't think that that's realistic to live life right. by that. I think that we all have a little bit of a crazy side and to embrace it, run towards it, I love that. I'm hey. all for it. I will definitely be buying that book. All right, you've already sold one book here, uh -huh. Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> At number two, Dancing with the Stars alum Jerry Rice is married. The NFL legend and his longtime love, Letitia, tied the knot in Calistoga Ranch in Napa Valley on Sunday. The couple got engaged in March 2018 and have been together for over a decade. That is a long, long yeah, time together. a long time. That's yeah. a long time to be 
together before you get married. I know. Well, they're finally ready to take the next step. That's Dancing so with the nice. Stars. I mean, you're obviously a dancer. Would you ever go out to oh uh, my be gosh. a pro on that show? I would love to do that. I freaking love Dancing with the Stars. You'd it's be so, so good. Amazing. You know, it's so funny because yes, I'm a dancer and stuff, but I didn't realize how much of a part of me it is. When we were in the house, I'm, I, I sound so annoying. I keep referencing the house. No, but yeah. sorry, that's like literally what my life has been for the last four months. Um, but when we were in the house, we weren't allowed to listen to music, and I would still find a way to dance. Still, every single day, I would be dancing by myself, no music in the house. It's a part of me. It's a part, you know, that it just resonates with so many people. And, you know, Dancing with the Stars, that's the best show on television. All right, well, let's call them up. We'll get yeah. them. You'd be a perfect pro for Sign it. Sign me up, guys. <laughs> and at number one, a little sad news. Lori Harvey was arrested on Sunday after allegedly hitting a parked vehicle and attempting to flee the scene. People confirmed with the Beverly Hills PD that Steve Harvey's stepdaughter was involved in a motor vehicle collision and was identified by a witness who saw her walking away from the scene. Authorities tell people that Lori's car was found on the side, on its side, and she was detained a short distance away. She was arrested and released at the scene without being taken into custody. Lori's arrest comes just days after her split from Sean Diddy Combs and a rumored new romance with rapper Future. And this is a developing story, so for more updates, please check out people.com. Tommy, I have to ask you, when you're going through troubled times, what is it that you look to to kind of get through that? I look to my family. Yeah. Um, and listen, th it sounds like what she's going through is a lot. Right. It's not just the accident. The accident be came because of these other things that are going on. Sure, it could be. Um, they could all be involved. Who knows? Yeah, it's all connected, you know? Like, it's how it's it manifests. The accident probably manifests because of the other stuff that's going on in her life. And, I, I you know, I just, I pray for her. I, f I feel bad. That's a really hard place to be in. And I hope that she's just okay because, they're, they're, you know, that's that's so scary when you feel like you're losing control mm. and you don't know what to do about it. So well, you run, you flee, and I, you know I understand it. I know that it's wrong, but you, you understand why people do something like that. Well, you mentioned your family, so hopefully oh. she'll kind of turn into yeah. uh, her family. She's got Steve Harvey there, and he'll yeah. set her straight. In the meantime, we are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we are going to see what you've been up to since you wrapped Big Brother. Got a lot of questions. Uh, yes, I got a lot of answers. <laughs> Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. I am still here with Big Brother Breakout alum, Tommy Ooh. Rocco. What is up, buddy? <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, so happy to have you here. I'm really. so happy to be here. Thank you, Dave. You're amazing. We've the, already... Everyone's amazing. This oh, is stop, great. stop, stop. We've already gone through all the craziness going on in reality. So TV, much so craziness. I want to talk about you. I want to see what you've been up to. Okay. Uh, you obviously did very well for yourself in the Big Brother house. Came in, what, uh, fifth, fifth place? Yeah. Place? That's pretty Not awesome. Bad. And you know what's funny? You know, there's 16 people that start off in the house, and I got fifth. But I honestly don't look at it like I got fifth place out of 16. I look at it that I got fifth place out of the thousands of people that yes. audition, that try to be in that on that show. I think getting picked alone means that we're all winners, all 16 of us. Right. Um, so I'm I'm happy. You know, it was it was really rough. It was insane, <laughs> but uh, I'm really happy with the way that it worked out. I'm happy to be home. I'm happy. Looking back, I'm happy with the way that everything went. Yeah, well, yeah. you had a huge Broadway career before all this started. Roles in Newsies and uh, obviously um, a Pretty Woman. <laughs> I'm curious kind of what made you want to take this step into reality TV. It's such a different beast. It's so funny. It's Big Brother. It's the yeah. game of Big Brother. I'm obsessed with that show. I'm obsessed <laughs> with the game. The minute that I watched that show, I knew that I wanted to be on it. And I fought every year I auditioned. Is it auditioning? Is it trying out? I don't know what to call it with reality TV. It's not the same. You're as an actor. It's always yeah, an audition. Whatever. Yeah. So it's an audition. I don't know. But uh, so I had been trying out for that show for years. I think I tried out four times before and it just wasn't the right timing. I, I didn't fit the piece. I didn't fit the puzzle the right way. But I got on this year and it was the I'm so happy. But it's it's not about reality TV so much as it, it's about Big Brother. Right. I love, love, love that game. I yeah. love everything it stands for. It's a big social experiment. It's insane. Well, you're cut very well for it. I have to say, you're tons Thanks. of personality. And when you Thanks. got into the house, you saw that your aunt's ex, Christy, yeah. was there. Uh, I'm curious kind of what your aunt's reaction to that was. You know, I, I saw how you yeah, handled it. I think that my, it, I was thinking of my family the whole entire time. That's immediately where my head went. And uh, I am so lucky that I have such a supportive family. It was definitely hard. You know, yeah. it, you, I mean, the facts are, 
I'm in a house with my aunt's ex. Yeah. So that's it's not going to be easy. But, you know, the second I got out of the house, I texted my aunt and she I spoke to her and she's doing good. She's happy. She's okay. All right. I'm it was hard. It was a challenge. It was. Um, you know, she didn't want to be involved. She said, do your thing. I, that's it. But um, but I, it's just a testament to how amazing she is that she understands what I, the position that I was in and she, you know, supports me still um, because it was difficult. What's your relationship <clears throat> like with Christy now? Because we saw on Instagram stories you two were celebrating her birthday this yeah. weekend. Seems like you have a good relationship. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny because, so when Christy was dating my aunt, they would, you know, get back together and break up sometimes. So I was, I, I always knew that Christy and I had a bond, but I would keep her at an arm's length because, you know, the, out of respect. Yeah, of course. Um, but once we got put in this situation, once we were in this house together, we we became so close. We're, yeah. You know, we're, I, I love her. I love everything about her. I'm, I'm obsessed with her. I think she's an amazing person. So yeah, we were celebrating her birthday yesterday in her house and it was so nice and intimate. It was just me, her, her family, her best friends. It was so cute and, you know, I... I you know, it's it's a tricky thing, but we're gonna figure it out. We'll be, we'll find the balance. We'll make it work. Well, Big Brother posted a clip of you and Christy on social media calling for a soap opera starring the two of you. Uh, you actually retweeted. I would watch it. What do you think that soap opera would look like? The, the um the wait, uh, what clip are you talking about? Is it the uh, you could look at me and yeah. see home? <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. It was you know so many people said to Christy and I afterwards. I feel like you had an advantage in this game because you knew each other, but. What people don't realize is that, yes, it comes with pros, having someone in the house, but it also comes with so many cons. Right. I was so afraid and so paranoid all the time. Every single thing that came out of my mouth, I had to watch. I had to be listening to every conversation that she had, not to make sure that our information you know, didn't match up or whatever it was, right. or did match up. Um, so being in that house together was really scary. It was really tough. Um, and when you know when you get moments like this in the bathroom, moments where we're alone, I'm whispering and I'm trying to make her feel better. But <laughs> you know I don't want to make her. I don't want other people to see right. me making her feel better because then they'll be on to us. Yeah. So it's it's that delicate balance. And I was saying to her, Christy, you could look at me and you could see home, and she she didn't hear me. <laughs> so uh, I said it again and then again. Um, but she's she's amazing, and we you know I'm proud of the way we did. I think that we played a great game, and you know it was our dream to be on that show, let alone together. But uh, it, it worked out. You've that way. watched the show back now since you've gotten out. I saw on Instagram stories you were. I'm on episode about 24, so okay. I'm not there yet, and it's getting harder and harder to watch it. So I, you know, whereas I was watching like five episodes through at a sit down, right. now I'm only able to watch one and then I have to take a break, and then another one. So I'm going at a slower pace Well, the now. big topic of this season was the bullying and kind yeah. of some of the racial mm -hmm. things that were said amongst some members of your alliance. You didn't yep. participate in a lot of those, mm -hmm. but what was it like watching it back? Yeah, it was really tough, but you know, it's so interesting because, to be honest with you, nobody knows what it's like to be in that house except the people that were in there. And there's so many layers, there's so much to it. There's so many emotions. What I love about the house guests is that we're willing to forgive and move forward. I mean, Nicole, America's favorite player, she said it best. Forgiveness is her word. And that's how I feel too. Um, did you personally but, apologize to her? Yeah, I did apologize to her. And what, you know, what people may have not seen is that Nicole and Nick were best friends in that house. And then uh, Nick and I were best friends. So when Nick was evicted, Nicole and I became really close. She was actually like my person in the I house, hear you. Yeah. Um, especially that last week. So I know that Nicole and I are great. But then, you know, when you get out of the house and you hear of all the backlash and all people's opinions on what was going on and you see it, the, you know, the big thing that I like to say is that America has all the information. We don't have all the information. We truly thought in that moment where we, when we, shut Nicole out of the HOH when we didn't allow her to come in. Right. We truly thought that she was the snake trying to divide our alliance apart yeah. and we caught her. So we were celebrating that. We really thought that that was her. Right. We come to learn that she was telling the truth and you know, it's- You regret that? Yeah, I do regret some of my actions for sure. There's a lot of things that everyone regrets doing in that house, yeah. but that's what, but everyone in that house understands that and they can respect that and that's, the most important thing to me is that 
I'm good with all of the house guests and that they forgive me and that Well, you definitely I'm good told with them. them you love them enough. You told oh, everybody love you them. love them. I do. I do. <laughs> and oh. that's what I love about you. You're very genuine <laughs> and very kind. You kind of as a viewer, you Thanks. came across really well, I think. Thank you. There was a lot of showmances this season. Yes. Do you think any of them will last? I mean, I really do actually. Yeah. I think that, you know, that everyone's doing really good. Yeah. Um you know, I got to say, like, I think all the showmances have a shot at lasting, but especially Holly and Mickey, those two are a great team. They're perfect for each other. Nice. They're always together. It's so, so refreshing to see. Um, I love FaceTiming them and checking in. Oh, and, good. You know, I, we may have not seen eye to eye in the game, <laughs> but uh, it, that the fact that we're able to put that aside and say that was game, not personal. Right. This is personal. I was that, shipping I you and that. Nick. I wanted you and Nick to get together. Me too, but now he's with Kat. Oh, God. Oh, so no. annoying. But are you single these days? Yeah. What does your DMs look like? They've got to be out of control. It, yes. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, it's very, very sweet. It's overwhelming. You know, it's it's all the 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 people, everyone reaching out. Uh, you know, when you before you go into the house, all you think about is playing the game, going into the house, what you're going to do. You don't think about the afterwards. You don't think about... The exposure that this gives you, it's not about that. It's about playing the game. Yeah. But your life does kind of change after the game. Um, so I'm 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 just trying to like hang out with my family right now and yeah. just get back to get who that I Staten am. Island squad in. Yeah, I love them so much. I got my cousin waiting in the green room. She oh, came in with me. I awesome. love her, my cousin Angelica. Well, we've got yeah. a question from the Twitterverse that we have to talk yes. to. So let's see what they had to say. We asked them before the show started what questions they had and our question of the day. So at Mike Skuminik wants to know, would you be willing to pose for a Calvin Klein underwear ad? Oh, hmm. Yes. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, why not? Yes. I mean, absolutely. I think that I love Calvin Klein. I've worn their underwear my whole life. My mother buys them for me for Christmas. Nice. It's a little weird gift, right? Underwear for Christmas? Whatever. It's Thanks, Mom. Love Italian. you. Italian. We love that. <laughs> Before you go, I just have to ask you quickly. I yes. know that you have a big reunion coming up with the cast of Newsies yeah. uh, for this beautiful uh, Broadway uh, 25, yes. 15, 25 celebration. Are you excited to get back together with I everyone? am so, so excited to hang out with my Newsy boys. They are my first family. I mean, you know, we all have so many dreams in our life. My first dream was to make it to Broadway, and I did, and it was with those boys that I made my Broadway debut. And so many of them, they're my brothers for forever, so I can't wait to dance with them on stage again. I, I'm so excited, and for such a great cause, too. Yeah. For Broadway it's a Cares, Broadway Cares, Broadway Cares Equity Cares. Fights AIDS. It's something that I believe in, something that I would love to, you know, give my time with, for, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, I just think it's, it's an amazing opportunity. It's an amazing organization. Disney's the best. My cast is the best. It's great. <laughs> All right. Well, I will be there cheering you on. Thank you so much, Tommy. Thank you. Uh, we are going to head back out to break, but when we come back, Kyle Christie from MTV's The Challenge will be here Skyping in from the UK, so stay tuned. Yeah. I just never know where you stand half the time, bro, um, and I'm having to say Kyle's name. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host today, Dave Quinn. And all the way from across the pond, we have Kyle Christie from MTV's The Challenge, War of the Worlds 2. Kyle, how are you, man? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Are you good? I'm great. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you so much. Amazing. We're going to get right into Thursday's episode because you seem blindsided when your name is called for the proving ground at the tribunal. Let's revisit that moment right now. I never thought I'd say this guy's name because he hasn't said mine. Uh, but since every game I've played with him, he's been a floater. And it's not that I doubt your abilities, but I just never know where you stand half the time, bro. And I'm happy to say Kyle's name. So you said you felt betrayed by Josh and Rogan in that moment. I want to know why, because you were on the other alliance within Team UK anyway. Uh, the reason I was on the other, because the original plan was to be in alliance with Joss and Rogan. But the reason I was on the other side is because I found out Joss and Rogan were working with Paulie and Cara, and I physically can't be on their side at all after what they've put me through in the past. So um, I had to switch it up a little bit, but I also would never have said Joss's name. I would have said Rogan's name because he promised everyone in the game like that he wasn't going to vote them in. Um, so I didn't really feel betrayed by Rogan. It was more Joss, because I knew I was never going to say Joss's name. And, yeah, 
I absolutely hate that guy for doing that. <laughs> and as much as he's just, he, you, he, he, he said I was a floater, but I'm not a floater at all. I pick a side and it was just not his side. And he was pissed with me, but right. I can't, you so, know, like he's, he screwed me over basically. <laughs> and I felt betrayed. So I would assume that your relationship with him right now is not super great. Um, no, not at all. Because me and Joss, we're really close. Uh, we've been together since Vendettas. We've been like that. And we've had each other's backs while we've been in the house. Even though we've always worked on different sides, we've always had each other's backs. Right. But now we're just, we're, we're not, we're, I wouldn't say we were friends at the moment. I yeah. would tolerate him and we'll be cool, but we're not friends. Are you going to forgive him, you think? You think you'll forgive him? Um, he says he's it sorry? Would take a lot. He would take a lot of making up to do. Um, he would have to do something. If he ever done another one, he would have to do something in the game to make it up to me. Um, but at, at the moment, no. Well, I'm all for reconciliation, so I hope that we see that. But circling back to your <laughs> name being at the tribunal, your teammates had actually been talking about you leading up to the meetings. Let's rewatch that. I feel kind of bad my interest, though. Well, there is another option. <laughs> Well, and the other option is Kyle. Kyle's known for being a floater. He's known as the type of guy that'll say anything anybody wants to hear at any given moment to save his own ass. So I want to know what you're feeling watching that back. That was literally CT. That was CT <laughs> explaining himself. <laughs> he was talking about himself, you think, huh? Yeah. That, that's, I love CT a bit. He's a, he's a great guy. He's a great uh, competitor. But I feel like People don't realize how good CT is at the social game. But CT is mm. very good at the social game. He's like perfected it. Um, right. And <laughs> you just explained himself there. Yeah, it's a take one to no one sort of situation, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> where does it like? Where does he think I learned it? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you ended up on the proving ground facing an extremely taxing challenge. Do you think that if you had strategized better, you could have beaten Theo? Yeah, my problem was, okay, so I knew that I had to get the heaviest one first, but I couldn't find the heaviest weight because the I think it was the 30 or 20 kilogram, look, uh, 30 or 20 pounds looked exactly like the heaviest one. So I just went for the 50 or something. I, I just, my tactics were all wrong and I screwed up <laughs> and I thought the heaviest one wouldn't be that heavy, but it was. Theo had the right tactics, and uh, he was the better man that night, and he won fair and square. Hindsight is always twenty twenty in these situations. Exactly. I love how you urged Georgia and Theo to switch teams. Were you disappointed to see Georgia and Theo decide to stay with Team UK? I was heartbroken because I... So when, when they kick you out of the house and you have to leave, yeah. I actually left, and I was actually... I, I came back onto the set, and I was in a bush at the side of the filming and I was just waiting for them to switch, just hoping they would switch. And I had to watch them both stay with UK and I was like, why have you done that? Oh. Because the, the main thing for me is, yes, okay, in the game, I might as well have switched because I've been voted down there, but I also want to make good TV and good TV is to switch. It's funny. Like, even Johnny said it when Johnny got beaten off field and went home. It's good TV if you switch, and I would have loved to have switched and just been so annoying on the American side. It would have been incredible. <laughs> I live for it. Drama. That's what we want to see. We want drama. <laughs> I, would, I would have, like, called team meetings, even though we don't need them. I would have walked around with a big American flag around me. It would have been funny. I love. I would have loved to see that. Too bad, yep. unfortunately. Well, despite their internal drama, Team USA has proven time and time again to be far more successful at winning these challenges. This past week, the Americans really crushed Team UK by a landslide. What do you think that the Team UK has to do? Like, what do you think Team USA has that the UK doesn't? Um, the Team USA is probably one of the best teams to ever be in the challenge. Um, all of them are strong. There's no weak people in that team at all. They all work as much as they hate each other and there's two sides, they all work together better. They've got better leaders, i.e. Jordan. Um, I think he's probably the best person on their team. Zach, real powerhouse. They just work together better. And their weakest competitor is probably just as good as one of our best competitors. 
they just have put together a team. I think we kind of got screwed by the challenge gods because we had all the rookies. We had all the people who can't really run. Right. And it was just it was just annoying to watch. I, I honestly wish I was... A, they should have let me be on Team USA from the start because <laughs> over the past few seasons, I've been building my alliances with Team USA because all the UK people, they come, they go. It's not the same people every time, right. but I'm the constant. I've been there since the start and I've never missed a season. So I've kind of built all my alliances and it's screwed me that season. <laughs> well, I noticed you mentioned all the members of Team USA except for Kara <laughs> and except for Polly. Are you, the, the, uh, the anger there is still pretty prominent? Um, uh, not as much, but at the same time, I do think they are both strong. I'm not going to take that away from them, but uh, I don't know if they are strong. I've never seen them in elimination for, I think I've, I think I've only seen Kara in one elimination in my whole right. challenge career. And yeah, that's actually true. I've only seen him once. I've seen Pauly in a few, but I've only ever seen him win one. It, it's funny. Yeah, I've only ever seen him win one. That's true, yeah. You talk about building all your alliances uh, throughout the past couple of seasons. I've noticed that also includes hooking up with ladies. This season, there <laughs> wasn't any hookups. Was there something we didn't see? Was there something behind the scenes that uh, never made it on air? Oh, no, no. I, I just I, I need to start. I need to win one of these challenges. I really badly. And me hooking up with women, it's just it's it's just not it's not good for me. <laughs> it proper knocks me back. Like as much as I'll flirt with girls to try and get further on in the game, I can't take that extra mile at this moment in time. I'm sure you're doing pretty well for yourself in the long run, nonetheless. <laughs> I am a huge fan of yours, and I kind of want to see you and Kara do a Battle of the X's. Would you do a season like that? How do you think you guys would do? Oh, God. A lot of people say this, and a lot of people say, oh, it would be so good to see it. I honestly feel if Kara would actually speak to me, we would actually get on very well, and we would actually win a lot of challenges. But at the same time, I don't, I can't trust her. Um... I feel like if we got to the final, she would steal the money from me. So Ooh. would there be any point in getting to the final and would there be any point in in, in pursuing that as much as, yeah, it, it would be funny though, wouldn't it? I, it, it would be so funny. <laughs> Look, I, I don't want be, you to lose the money I, I would, in the end, but I'd watch that. <laughs> I would be talking to her and trying to get her like to win a daily challenge and she'll just be like just silent and not speaking to me. Yeah. And I'll be like, yeah, me and Cora, we're back together. We're going to win this challenge. It's going to be so fun. And she'd be like, she'd just be silent. <laughs> she just wouldn't speak to me the whole challenge. It'd be so funny. I'd have to speak to Paulie to speak to Cara. Right. Like, I'd have to get him to speak for me. Listen, cleaning up some of these uh, this bad blood could be interesting for you in the future. Yeah. Nonetheless, I will be watching and cheering you on. Kyle, thank you so much for being part of the show. The thank challenge, you so much. War of the Worlds 2, airs on MTV Wednesday nights at 9, 8 central. Don't go anywhere. When I come back, I have a reality TV history moment you will not want to miss. Well, that's it for today. Big thanks to today's guests, Tommy Brocco and Kyle Christie for a great show. Make sure you are following at people on Twitter so you can catch the latest episode of Reality Check, which streams Monday through Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Today, I will leave you with a reality TV moment that looks like it came from the future. I'm Dave Quinn, and that was your Reality Check. You told anybody else except us in the room about this? Yes, I have. And you're still walking around free, I see. Sure. In this 2009 episode of Shark Tank, Darren pitches the sharks a Bluetooth ionic ear that needs to be surgically implanted. We're going to operate on people. Yes, we are. We're going to stick something in near their brain. No, we no, may no, no, not no. puncture their ear. You know what? Damon is out right away. It's pretty disturbing and it freaks me out, I'm already out. Then Darren explains the charging process. Can you stick that needle in your head every night to charge it? Yes, you would. OK, wait, you whoa, don't whoa, think. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on, Trini. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if you miss, Darren? So that you can't miss. You can't miss. And the pitch pretty much goes downhill from there. Darren, I'm out. I am out. This is the weirdest damn thing I ever heard. Don't call me, I'll call you. I'm out. Despite the unanimous hard pass, Darren's ionic ear pitch is one of the great moments in reality history. One time in the shower, you're gonna just short out. 